uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Today we're going to talk phase, the AE phase. Uh, this is the tier 9 tank that you can get a hold of if you're a very, very lucky wallet warrior. I think it's a 0.05% chance of getting this tank, so very low odds. Uh, and if you're looking for a comp, uh, as in a different kind of tank, a uh, different tank that is very similar to this one, it would be the M103 for me. And I'm going to break it down. By the way, stick around to the end of this video. The last game is the funniest game I have had or played this year in Blitz. Okay? Big, big hilarious moments. Let's do that later. Um, the superpower of this tank is that, as you probably saw me type FFS LOL in there, or oh, seriously, is that I... I think it grants more opportunities to 5 tank Kolobinov than any other tank I've ever driven. Uh, tank performs just grand, but at the end of the day, 35% win rate over 20 games with 2400 average damage and a tier 9 heavy is indicative of the teams that the tank was uh, dealing with rather than the tank itself. The tank is just grand. It's got a couple of things going for that the 103 doesn't have. And it's got a couple of things that it really misses that the 103 does have. Let's talk about the gun first, because that really is the thing that um, makes this tank interesting to me. The gun is the same gun as the 103 in all intents and purposes. It is the 120mm M58, the M58A it's called on the face. On the 103 it's called the M58. But its aim time and dispersion are just a little bit worse than the 103. And it means you're going to get a lot of situations like this where you try and let it go using... Because the turret isn't a perfect uh, T32 style turret. It's more like a Chieftain Mark VI where you do have a hatch that can be penetrated. In fact, I mean, it just won't hit if you don't let it go all the way down on the, the aiming circle. You can't be sure of it. And that was a little bit frustrating for me, but it's probably just indicative of a bit of balance within the tank um this is what i'm talking about here i tried to hit this guy on the back deck for like ages in this game ended up doing 3k and everyone died and whatever who knows um but you can see it just the dispersion is 0 0.353 the 103 is slightly better than that the aim time is 4.3 103's aim time is 3.8 when you're fully buffed and the DPM is about the same, and the penetration is about the same. So why would you take the phase over the 103? Well, what the phase does have is a massive 25% improvement on gun depression. The 103's got 8 degrees of gun depression. The phase has 10 degrees of gun depression. That's a full 10 degrees of gun depression on a tier 10 heavy. I'll show you this video here particularly because this is like a great example. Noob phase says the 5120. Thank you, 5120. Um... I came over here and killed a tank, and now you're carrying on like a pork chop. That's all right. Uh, let's just do our thing. The real joy of the phase is that you're going to have these situations where gun depression is literally the game for you. And this tank can absolutely take advantage of that. The turret is interesting in that it is exactly like a Chieftain's in that it's really good, apart from that one point on top, and that's really gonna get you penned but for the most part same tier tank gameplay and and lower tier tanks you can really bully with this turret um there's not many tanks that can take advantage of the turret weak spot um at same and lower tiers when you get put up to tier 10 it can be become more difficult because the tier 10 heavies really are way more accurate um with more dpm and the tanks that have that kind of a, a gameplay style are really what you're going to be worried about um it's a funny one, though. If you've driven the 103 and you like the 103, you're going to love this tank. It is strong. It's got a, a fair chunk of hit points. Uh, its mobility is decent. It's for a, a T9 American Heavy. That's what I'm talking about for mobility. Um, your dispersion isn't great. Like the, If you want a DPM hull down with a kind of soft turret at this tier, the Conqueror is what you're after. That's going to put you out under 0.3 dispersion and over 3K DPM or around about 3K DPM. If you're an American Heavy and you're really searching for um, armor, then, I mean, it's such an odd thing, this this line at Tier 9. You don't really get that tank, despite the Tier 8 being and the Tier 7 being so dominant turret-wise in terms of armor. Uh, the Emil's obviously the go there, but that's rubbish DPM. The... 
the joy of it really is that that 10 degrees of gun depression on a 120 millimeter gun which is great and you are going to have moments where you bounce a lot of shots but the turret is not the turret that is going to just let you sit there regardless of your elevation and farm uh, you've got parts of the turret at the front that are going to be 300 millimeters uh, and and up on pen. You've got parts that are going to be as low as 240, 250. And that means that someone running a tier 9 standard heavy tank gun is going to be able to pen the cheeks. If you wiggle the turret and keep it up, you're going to be all right. Also, the boxy uh, floodlight on the front that looks a little bit like a M60, um, that makes it tougher to to aim at if you get the gun up in the air and you move it around and you just basically be a punish uh, you can see the gameplay here is this is what i was dealing with a lot is just i'd go a heavy flank and there wouldn't be a lot of heavies but what there are was I'd, I'd fight to a standstill or, or kill but then the medium flank would just go to bits and this this game was actually pretty close we ended up um in a situation where things got very very close indeed it's not a tank that i think is going to be worth spending the earth on but it does look pretty spectacular it does look uh futuristic and cool and all that kind of stuff and it is in my opinion better than the m103 uh but not not to the point where you're saying this is an overpowered tank it's it's not that at all uh, a lot of people who drive this won't have a freaking clue how to make the most out of it because you can do a lot of damage despite the fact it's only got 2500 dpm it's got enough going for it that you can put it in that position and do a lot of damage regardless uh, I, f I find it baffling how people i was just checking to see if the tortoise was there still there cool that tort doesn't move like the entire game doesn't move the entire game it's just the rest of the team falls apart if he had a push down there and just done some hit point trading with a massive dpm and uh advantage he's got over pretty much everybody else in the game he would have been a bit of a hero as it is he waits way too long to move and it was three on five it's now three on four the tort hasn't pushed around so we're getting to take advantage of that lack of tier 9 TD, but there's not many hit points left on our team. There's me, and then there's two very low hit point TDs. And the reason I'm not pushing around was I was expecting the tort to actually come out and get involved. And then, bang, bang, uh, suddenly it's just a tort and a tier 8 medium. Now, you can absolutely bully tanks like these tier 8 mediums. The tier 8 mediums don't have great DPM. There, it's, a, it's a funny tier, tier 8 as a medium. There's not a lot of them that have incredibly good DPM, uh, and they certainly don't have the hit point pool and the armor profile to deal with tier nine heavy tanks. So we're rumbling and stumbling and coming back to the tort, but we've got low hit point TDs, and I'm in my head just thinking, please don't attack. Why? Um, none of you have hit points. We're up, and why are you even peaking a near full hit point tier, 10, tier nine TD? Just... Get an angle, wait for me to get over here and spot him. And then if he pushes me, because we've got a cap advantage, you can start blowing him up. Otherwise, all that you're going to do, I mean, again, just random yoloing as we click over the 4k damage mark. And the tort is so dangerous. I mean, I I know a lot of people don't respect that gun, but um, I really do. I've always been uber successful in the tortoise. Posting in the tort is an absolute art form. Keeping it on a super savage angle and hiding that hatch above the right side of the gun. If you can do that, you can do all kinds of things. And I show him a little bit of leg here just to do a hit point trade. And then I'm just going to back all the way up. Uh, I'm going to show you one more game after this. And it is an absolutely hilarious game where so much happens in such a ridiculously short amount of time. And if you've waited this long, stick around for it because it is the most unexpected game. <laughs> anyway, you'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm just holding this angle. I don't want to break contact with the tort. And he does the right thing. He comes around the, the top corner there. 
got good gun depression and then we load up the heat and we're just waiting for him um and now we're elevated it's very hard for him to get around and get that gun up as long as we're holding an angle like this it's a good tank and it's a tank that i think a lot of people are going to like just because it looks so very very different but i can't emphasize enough that it is not going to give you a super duper win rate and you can see there two big shots right through the front uh through the lower glacis all right that was the mastery 5k damage um let's have a look now at the most wild game of blitz that has occurred in ages and it starts off very quiet because this is when junior went on his lunch break the missus was screaming she was trying to find the car keys and i had to leave the house and someone shoots me i'm that that's the t34 i'm afk and there's a dude up there and this is all my fault like this is what you get from lockdown when everyone's hanging around and i'm i'm completely afk and that t34 just rolls around the corner he's like awesome gonna kill everyone and here comes the vk and the vk is like whatever um and this is pretty funny that vk actually just goes afk he's like screw it like i'm i'm done i'm done we're two tanks down uh, we're a tank down we're about to be two tanks down and i wake up and there is two tier eight heavies here and there's a tier eight heavy on my left and i just think oh, okay i'll go out here and do some damage two dogs uh i miss my button and i'm already half hit points before we start but that vk has just given up he thinks that this is a win and he's just left he's just left and i'm like oh, i'll take a little bit of damage and i realize then He's not moving. He's not moving. Uh, it's three on five. Well, and I've been hit twice again. Nice shots. Nice shots. And we're going to climb up out of here before that IS-5 can get around the corner. And there's an ISU over there, but he's shooting at other people. Two, two bounces. There we go. We actually bounce the ISU. Get just away. And the VK is still AFK. I'm thinking if I can sneak one shot in before the ISU reloads and then back it up. Shot, quick shot, 10 degrees of gun depression. Angle up. Is he looking? He's looking. Oh, get back around. Leave the VK alone. VK's still AFK. And, uh, whoa, there's a medium coming. That's 1v4. Get down here. Go hull down again. Only got 118 hit points. Quick snapshot. He's missed. He's missed. This is our chance. Start turning towards the medium that's coming in from the other flank. It's 2v4, sorry. My bad, my bad. Bang! Medium donks it. Gets taken out from behind by... Here comes the... Ah! Boom! And I rack. <laughs> How about them apples, buddy? And there's the VK. And everyone's like, wow. Oh, really? Well, you get that on the big jobs. This was absolutely something I deserved. After the constant pain and suffering that I'd gone through grinding this tank for the first 19 games. This is game number 20. And we just walk away a winner. 4K damage from AFK after bouncing a shot on Bushka. Thanks so much for watching. Look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.